As I've said earlier, if you're going to do a period piece as a film, and that could be as recent as last year, the easiest way, the most singular way of defining a period is to have a prop that is realistically from that time. Here we have a suitcase commonly used in movies. A suitcase will tell people whether they're aware or not of that period in time because luggage for some reason, like cars, evolves and changes. But to define the period in the background using props, working with the set dresser, you can clearly denote years without even looking at the actors. Here we have the cans on the shelf, the grocery store, and you can see from that what year that would be, probably 40s. Here we have a supply of watches that the prop master might have to, again, use for different times, literally. And you could even go to the hair dryers for the particular period. Here it looks like hair dryers from somewhere between the 20s and the 50s, for all I know. But these are real hair dryers from that period, but given their placement in the movie, immediately puts us in the 1940s as would these dishes, farmhouse dishes perhaps, but putting these props in the scene helps us deliver to the audience the feeling that they are there in that farmhouse in the 1940s, as well as using a pram from the past. These type of uh, baby carriages, if we saw it in a 40s or 30s movie, would really get us there. Now we couldn't do it uh, with anything more recent. So just a singular prop, like a baby carriage, can help us travel back in time. Let's look at The Great Gatsby, for instance, as far as a prop extravaganza because of the uh, ornate and uh, overfilled nature of Gatsby's desire to impress, um, this uh, munificence that he's got to explode uh, uh, from his mansion to gather everybody to impress the woman he's in love with. Look at the flower arrangement here. This is all props, as is the candy arrangement on the table in the background. So the props master, you can see in the corner here, he's positioning DiCaprio because anything the actor touches again, in these flowers, he's going to say what flowers are real, what not, giving him the exploration of his prop, uh, his prop wilderness. The Gatsby um, movie uh, won numerous awards for its uh, production design. Uh, but just look at this, the props and the way they make the scene. Of course, it's got this wonderful carpet and the furniture, which is um, really upholstered in, in, a, in, a, in a rich, lavish way, but given uh, us a picture of the time. But look at, look at the, the cigarette box on that uh, Regency table or the Louis XIV kind of table. Literally. Now, look at how many cigarette boxes are in that room, telling us 20s, the glasses, the cigarette boxes, simple props conveying the feeling, the white flowers conveying um, uh, the fact that this is a mansion where that flowers change daily. In this wonderful room here, I love the drapery in the background, um, blowing, giving us the texture, the openness of the scene in this mansion. I also love the way the wardrobe his work with the props people to make this very art deco, those smooth, long lines, whether it's the pearls or the long lines of her outfit or the long lines of the carpet. It's, it's, it's linear and it's, I mean, in a way it's, it's, it's drawn with the lines. It's not abstract in anything. It's detailed. And the prop people with their cigarette boxes and their glasses have changed the flower arrangement to, again, mirror the setting here, which is uh, crystal and white, but if they're downtown in a hotel room, the prop people change everything so the flowers aren't white anymore. They're reflecting the darker red tones of the carpet and, and the dark wood tones of the wall so the flowers are pink, not white anymore. The flower arrangement has to be adjusted. This is a prop maker's domain, making sure the crystal too isn't as uh, delicate as the mansions. It's hard steel or, or in the, in the ice buckets, the, they glint with this metallic feeling and not this crystal feeling. So we go back to the mansions. We try to either have the plants that are 
are, are, are amplifying the space is so big that we can grow trees. Or we have the feathers, which is very 50s motif together with the white chrysanthemums and, and the glittering glass. It's all going to uh, exaggerate the sense of wealth here. And now uh, every scene in the Gatsby, the props people are placing different flower arrangements. Even in front of the door here, they've got uh, flower arrangements above hanging and coming out of the planters below. To emphasize a party scene, you can light it any way you want, you can dress it any way you want, but with the champagne bottles here, exaggeratedly huge, it says it all. So once you've got that prop, you just multiply that prop with everybody else, it says party, and you've conveyed what you need to convey in that scene. I love this scene out of um, <coughs> Great Gatsby. Look at the, the, the glasses with their fruit um, straws and their mint julepy hangings it's just and, and the way they're lit from the prop light there that that uh, uh, almost tiffany lamp that's lighting the glasses there's people in the background there's an arch there's the caprio there's everybody but what steals the scene what really marks the scene which gives it that perspective and time are those two glasses that the props people have put there as are the wedding um cakes that the prop people have lined up with the pearls draped in pearls it says it all right it says that that lavish um rich extraneous uh wealth draped in this uh set against this kind of traditional mahogany it, it's all very much a wedding party where money's been poured into it. switching over going back completing our our historical romp with Mad Men, a different period, not the 20s, not the deco period, where things are draped and sconced and everything. Now we've got the 60s and the 50s and the 60s where it's geometrically modern, straight lines, clean lines, light aspects of the furniture, not, nothing heavy, things uh, looking like they've been carved out of very light wood. And so it's almost somewhat Japanese-y, mixed with a little modern um, Bauhaus look. It's, it's the look of, of Mad Men. Here we have um, a living room scene in Mad Men, and we have the prop master. You can see in the background there, he's setting the table or the cabinet with whatever they've got there arranged. It looks like maybe some candy dishes, whatever. But the prop master at work as they're getting some sound readings from, from the the mic here and they've got the the flowers again matching the couch this is a prop ma master knowing their coloration so we've got orangish flowers matching the orangish couch kitchen scenes in Mad Men are very detailed they give us that feeling just that orange juice bottle alone will tell us we're in a different time along with the pink casserole and and the plastic glasses uh, just throws us right back to the 50s that that bright mixture of color there. And if they're going out to dine in the restaurant, we have to have our signature items. We have to have the ashtray, which you'd never see anymore. Um, you have to have that the light, wooden chairs, um, the glassware. It's all saying late 50s, early 60s restaurant. Going back home, Don Draper is with his daughter, and they've matched up not only the cutlery, but the egg box looking very much like the period that he's trying to depict. And when he's alone, depressed, hotel room, we have to get, as prop people, we have to get the beer that looks right in the bottles. Of course, they're using a generic label because they don't want any product placement, but the beer bottle looks like 50s beer bottle. And the dress here is, is wonderful, 50s motif. Her white purse matching her white glasses and then that gumball machine in the background the collection of colors on that gumball, the gumball machine you talk about detail as far as props go the collection of colors in that gumball machine match the colors of her dress this is exquisite detail and another uh shot from apartment house in, in, in mad men we have uh signature pop items we have Candy dishes and ashtrays. That would be the signature thing you want. Candy dishes and ashtrays 
and coffee cups that are tall but shallow. With, of course, a decanter and your whiskey glasses, your signature whiskey glasses. And if you're doing a lower income Brooklyn apartment, we've got less of the fancy stuff, but we've got signature National Geographic underneath the table. We've got the ashtray, of course, the coffee cup, and the, the Bible, our, our religious tract on the table. It's telling us exactly what we know, want to know about this, this uh, group of people in this house here. Conservative, not very wealthy, but intellectually curious. And another hotel room where the seduction scene is being uh, set. We've got the scotch bottles and the glassware. The flowers matching the cover of, of the uh, of the report that he has on the on, on the on the dresser there is interesting. When we do in Mad Men, we go to the barber shop. It looks a little forties this, but fishy. It's got a fifties motif, and, and and it's very uncluttered. You look at barber shops now, and we have all sorts of products and and different rinsers and and, and, and uh, sprays, and but we didn't have that in the fifties and sixties. So they really get it down in this sense. The props by subtracting. The amount of props we normally have give us a sense of that past. It, it, we, we still feel the wealth because everything is very shiny and clean and glittering, but we don't have that overwhelming product explosion that would come later. Here's a wonderful way of setting up a scene of Mad Men. They do it with the lamps. Look at the lamps in the hand, but the, the, the lamp itself tells us early 60s, late 50s, as well as the sculpture on top of the bookcase. Wonderful. Two props, boom, were there. Like the lamps here in Don Draper's office. But what's wonderful about this scene is, here's a TV series supposed to take place in the, in the, in the 50s and 60s, but they have a selectric typewriter here. Now, a selectric typewriter is an electric typewriter with a revolving ball that goes up and down um, uh, the carriage to, to, to print. And this typewriter really wasn't on the market or even invented until the late 60s, early 70s. So they got a lot of grief, actually, Mad Men did, for putting a selectric typewriter in a scene uh, that would never have it because it hadn't been invented yet. The IBM Selectric hadn't been invented. So this is a, a glaring prop mistake. However, it's still, as the TV series goes, really excellent as far as looking what a prop person does. That ashtray, that wonderful ashtray uh, on the side. The, the paper bag with all the gifts, but to make it a signature scene in time, all they have to do is put the Life magazine, the Time magazine as a prop person, and you are um, you're ready to go. You're, you're, you're convincing the audience that you are back there in the early 1960s.